Hey, how's your day going? This is J.R. Bjarnson. Now, when it comes to looking at the internet, you always have to look at it knowing that half of it's truth, half of it's lie, and they meet somewhere in the middle. I was on TikTok and somebody was telling the viewer, me as I was scrolling on TikTok, that the Calgary Stampede was going to be canceled. And I thought to myself, no, not the Calgary Stampede being canceled. So I, I, I had to do my own research. I was about to do a podcast about the possible cancellations of the Calgary Stampede 2023. So the first thing I did was I went to the internet, went to the website, and there's still a countdown clock, 93 days. And uh, it, it looks like it's still gonna go. Moral of the story, always, always, always be careful with what you're going to talk about on the internet. Do additional research. The only time I don't research anything for these videos is when I'm talking about myself, because I know myself, inwards, outwards, inside out, right side in, you know? So there's really nothing for me to research. And I think that's why I enjoy daily video blogging, because I'm talking from my heart. I'm talking from me. I'm not talking about other subjects that I have no idea about and making it risky because some of you may actually take everything that I say to heart and I owe it to you to be honest so I normally just talk about myself. So looking at the Calgary Stampede 2023 possibly being cancelled, I was heartbroken. But I did learn something really cool about myself regarding the possible cancellations of the Stampede which looks like nope, still going, which is good. I'm so happy. When you find out something is going to be cancelled, I call it like the three stages of grief, right? Last September, WWE came to Edmonton to do a show and uh, I wanted to go, but I was like, you know what? I, I don't have any money. I, I, I just, I need to save up and I'm not going. This is relating to the Calgary Stampede because I was, when I heard it was gonna get canceled, I went through the three stages of grief. Stage one, oh, it's gonna be canceled? Why didn't I go? I could have went. Oh, number two, I should have went. I had so many years to go. Yeah, I was broke, but I could have taken out a loan to go have fun for a weekend. And number three, it's canceled. There's nothing I can do. Maybe this is an opportunity to try to do more with my life. I love going for cruises. No, not boat cruises, not flights, just going for a ride in our minivan. Best thing in the world. That's why you see a lot of videos of me in the van because I just love it, right? It's, it's fairly cheap. The only thing I'm paying for is gas. And if we really wanna buy something to eat, we'll do that. And that's my happiness in a nutshell. It's really, really tough for me to want to take out a loan to actually go have an experience. I know so many people out there that have taken out $15,000 loans just so they can go to Disneyland or a $10,000 loan so they can go spend a week in Mexico. That's not, it, it never registers in my head that I should do that because I worry about the future. I worry about, well, how am I gonna pay it off? Do I even know I'm gonna have a job? What if I don't perform enough stand-up comedy to pay off a loan? It's really hard for me to have a life where I get to go have these wonderful experiences because I refuse to put those experiences on a credit card or a line of loan, a line of credit, and just so what, I can go have fun? It's cool that yes, I would be able to have fun now, but there will be consequences in the future if I don't have a job, if I don't make enough money through stand-up comedy. And it's one of those things where it's really tough for me to uh, go have fun. It's really tough for me to go on vacation because the only way you will ever see me on a cruise is if it's paid for by another company or if, um, I'm fortunate enough to win it in a contest and it's free. If you see me on a cruise and I had to take out a line of credit for the cruise, you would probably see me down in the dumps a little bit because if I was to take out money that I don't have to go for a cruise, I would see dollar signs on everything, right? Like say the wife and I go for a romantic meal. I see dollar signs on the plate of food. I see dollar signs on the on the glasses of wine, various alcohol, you know, desserts. 
In my mind, it's really hard for me to go out and live a life of luxury because it's just how I was raised. Uh, we didn't have a lot growing up. I remember the coolest gift I ever got was a Nintendo 64, and I was about 10 years old when I got that. And to this day, I don't know how my mom got the Nintendo because we didn't have a lot of awesome things in life. On average, we moved house to house, apartment to apartment every year. It was always tough to stay afloat. And I think because of the childhood that I had, it's really, really hard for me to be irresponsible uh, into adulthood because it's just, I don't want to owe anything. I don't want to owe anyone. I never ask for money unless it's going to benefit me. The only time I've ever asked the internet for money was when I started a GoFundMe account many, 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 many years ago because I wanted to get the Ruby XL Portable CCTV. Don't have it anymore, but it served its purpose. I was able to run a cash register. I was able to take orders. It was so cool. I loved it to death. Now I have the Eastside glasses, and that's the other thing. I got the Eastside glasses on discount because for a while there, I worked with Eastside, and I was able to afford it because of their kindness and discount for talking about the Eastside 4 glasses. And it was just, it was really, really cool. So that's how I got the Eastside glasses. This camera we're on, the Canon SL2, I saved a lot of money to get this camera, Originally, this camera was going for $700 Canadian, and then Costco was having a sale on it for $400, which came with the kit lens. So I ended up purchasing this camera when I had the money to purchase this camera. That's how I do it. I save money when I can, and above all, when people ask me for money, I usually turn them away. Uh, it's just, it's really difficult for me, because if I lend money, I'm not getting it back. I've only gotten paid back maybe two or three times when I've lent out money, and now I've gotten to the part of my life where I am 32 years old, and anyone that has the courage to ask me for money, I outright tell them, I'm not giving you any money, I'd rather give money just to my family. Because I don't know if I'm gonna have money next month, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to pay them back if I was to borrow money, and I love just living here in central Alberta. If I want to go have an adventure, I'll just go for a walk. I'll try to experience the luxury of just looking at trees, even though I can't really see them. They're just blurry, but still looking at trees, just getting out there because we don't know how long we have left on this earth. We don't know if we're going to go into you know, um, a war, or we don't know if the American dollar is going to crash. We don't know if the Canadian dollar is going to crash. I know, right? It's really, really difficult because first of all, if, if it crashes, does that mean people who are in debt don't owe debt anymore? And whenever it's like live every day like it's your last, hopefully you don't have a credit card because it doesn't mean go spend all your credit card uh, money. And it's just, oh, it's really, really intense. So if I were you, my personal advice to you would be to save. Go on little adventures, but don't take out money to go on those adventures. Try to save. In this world we live in, it's really tough to save. The job you work at, the manual labor you work at, you probably just make enough to get your food, just barely, and, and you probably make just enough to pay for most of your bills, but every now and then, you're always lacking in one bill. I know for a while there I was behind on my power bills. I'm happy that I'm finally back up to speed on those guys. And it's just, it's really, really difficult to have a vacation if you're me, because I don't ever want to take out money to go on a vacation because I don't ever want to pay that money back and I'm always worried that I won't be able to pay that money back. For now, I just do this because it's fun. I used to be a YouTube partner, but that was a long time ago. YouTube changed and I only made a hundred bucks off that a year. <laughs> But I do have a wicked business idea that will benefit all of you if you enjoy watching my channel. And that's going to be coming up in about a month. I'll make the big announcement soon. And I think everybody will get a kick out of it. I think people will love it. And uh, yeah, you'll get more of J.R. Bjarnson, but in an on-demand format versus just these talking head videos. I really love doing these videos because they just... They're so awesome, right? All I do is hit record and hang out with you for 5, 10, 15 minutes. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I would love to know in the comments, if you've made it this far, how do you 
spend your money? Do you take out a loan and go on vacation? Do you put a little bit of money away? I hope you enjoy today's video. Thank you for watching, commenting, and subscribing. Let me know how you save your money in the comments. If you save money at all. I know a lot of people hang on by a thread and, uh, you know, keep hanging in there. That's all we can do. <laughs> My name's Jared Bjornsson. Oh, ending a video is always so difficult. Like, do I just press stop or do I keep going?